All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the uh, GSMC Wrestling Laurier podcast. Um, just to kind of uh, revamp on what we spoke about, we started the show off with the kind of like Thursday wrestling recap where you had uh, TNA Impact and Ring of Honor. And also a little teaser on NXT Level Up. And then we moved on to uh, the SmackDown preview and how the SmackDowns from here on out are probably going to be like the best SmackDowns you've ever watched this whole year because they have to build up toward Mania. And um, the third segment, we talked about just like a wrestling news round robin, just stuff to know going into the weekend before I leave you guys for two days and we rejoin on Monday. Just kind of things to keep tabs on, like RVD, a possible return. Uh, the Undertaker considering coming back for a couple more matches. Brock Lesnar being kind of tied up in those scandals and everything. And uh, John Cena questioning retirement. So um, these are all pretty huge things that I feel like you need our uh, wrestling attention because we're wrestling fans. And we, by golly, stick together. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and move on to our uh, fourth segment here. Is um, going to be about... Kyle O'Reilly, Kyle O'Reilly, um, former Undisputed Era, former Undisputed Kingdom, kind of jumping back into AEW as a singles competitor. Um, like I, I think I mentioned before in the podcast that I don't know if this is too fast for him to come back. I hope it's not. I hope this is like perfect for him and I hope that he totally kills it. But neck, neck injuries are really, really, really serious. Like, And that's the reason why sometimes when um, kind of like re reiterating on this whole people thinking that wrestling is not a sport, that the slightest thing that goes wrong, that could be your career. Hell, that could be your life. Look at like um, Droz from uh, wrestling back in Raw during the Attitude Era where D'Lo Brown was, um, he hit, I think, a pile driver, a pile driver, and he botched it. And that, and that now draws, I think he passed away, but he was crippled his whole entire life. Like he was, you know, he was uh, stuck in a wheelchair. And I remember that. And that's just something that's pretty serious. And uh, I kind of hope the best for Kyle O'Reilly and uh, kind of moving forward with that. You also had Edge. Edge was in a match with uh, Brodus Clay when Brodus Clay was coming up from NXT and he had the Funkadactos uh, with Naomi. Naomi was there. And um, he performed, I think, a DDT and he botched it and ultimately almost cost Edge his career. Like Edge was out of, uh, he was out of uh, wrestling competition for years, years on years. And a lot of people were wondering when he was coming back. And uh, I remember his heart felt... Um, retirement speech where he basically told uh wrestlers and the, the locker room and fans and his family that he cannot perform wrestling anymore the doctors basically said if you wrestle not that you will die but it would be really really bad for your health and um edge obviously is back he has uh he has had two neck fusion surgeries so obviously right now he's kind of doing his thing in AEW where he's he's supposed to fight Christian Cage in a last man standing match the next week, Toronto. So I'm looking very, very forward to that match as well. Um, the next one I want to talk about that I kind of I looked on the raw roster the other day because something like something piqued my interest about this guy is Robert Rude. I remember Robert Rude, the glorious one. Glorious. I won't give him like he did. He was he did so good in, in uh, TNA. And he came to NXT from TNA, and he was a fantastic NXT champion. And I was wondering, I was like, whatever happened to Robert Roode? Like, I was wondering if he signed with another company. But um, he's still on the WWE active roster. But he he's also doing producer work as of um, as currently. But he's also had a neck injury. And he also has had a neck fusion surgery. But I think he's kind of playing a little more safe than Kyle O'Reilly is. But... Um, I don't know, like these kind of uh, injuries that wrestlers sustain, like you could be the hottest thing on the market in the wrestling world. And then, bam, something like, you know, as simple as a botch of DDT or like jumping off of the top rope could just end it all. So I think that's maybe why as a wrestling fan, I kind of, uh, you know, I kind of admire these guys. And I kind of like I look up to these guys. I'm like, oh, man, like every day they're essentially putting their lives on the line for our entertainment which is why I love wrestling. Um, 
Um, also, another one that I kind of want to talk about was how Stone Cold Steve Austin also got a neck injury. Stone Cold Steve Austin was rising up. He was like the best wrestler during the Attitude Era. Like, no questions asked. Like, he had his feud with Vince McMahon. And he was basically like, he was the talk of the talk. Like, even sports shows other than wrestling, pro wrestling, like magazines, were talking about Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin made the Attitude Era prominent, made it very like, you kind of put it on the map. You put it on the map. Sean definitely helped a lot. But Stone Cold Steve Austin, he was the man. He was the, oh, man. He was like that anti-hero where, like, he didn't really care about, like, what people thought of him. But he, by, you know, by dang well, he was going to, you know, flip off Vince McMahon, give him the double bird, give him a stunner and, like, you know, drink some beers, you know, the Texas rattlesnake. Um, But... Like I said, he had a neck injury. And imagine if he never had his neck his neck injury. How much success would Shawn Michaels would have had if Stone Cold was on the roster? Imagine how much success that The Undertaker had because Stone Cold Steve Austin wasn't there. Imagine how much success that Triple H had because Stone Cold Steve Austin wasn't there. Um, these are all things, and you know, obviously things happen for a reason. And Triple H, Shawn Michaels. And um, I don't know, they, they all went on to kind of, you know, fulfill their destiny as like a huge main role in, in the WWF slash WWE. So obviously what they kind of did within the company was very, did very, very good. Obviously, if they won the Monday Night War between WCW. But um, I don't know, neck injuries are bad. Neck injuries are one of those things where, um, you know, it's not like any other injury. This is an injury that if the slightest thing goes wrong you can never walk again and that's huge that's huge like i know a lot of these wrestlers aren't just the wrestlers you see on tv they're husbands their fathers their brothers their sisters they want to one day walk their daughter and down the aisle and give her away they want to dance with her on the wedding floor and stuff like that and you know that won't happen because of a you know what they put on the line, what they, you know, what happens in the ring, the squared circle. And um, also there's another wrestler, uh, Big E. Big E from the um, from the New Day uh, also has had a neck injury. I remember it was a match between him and Ridge, Ridge Holland. Ridge Holland, where Ridge Holland botched the move. And um, now Big E hasn't been seen in WWE for a long time. Yeah, I believe he had he has had two neck fusion surgeries. Um, I don't know this is just also kind of you know kind of like a backstage kind of you know on the side of the ring aspect is that you kind of rely on other superstars to do the moves right to like kind of help. I remember watching um. I remember watching a video about how Randy Orton was very, very frustrated toward Kofi Kingston because he botched the move and really actually hurt his back. And I think during the match, you can kind of see him getting frustrated at Kofi, like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like, why? Like, and I think he actually like slapped his head as like a kind of like a dude, are you serious right now? Like at the same time, they're performers, but at the same time, they're co-workers. They have to protect each other. And I get I'm guessing like someone missed a step. And um, I don't know, something as simple as that could, you know, what could go wrong will go wrong or something like that. But uh, I don't know. I just feel like wrestlers are very, 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 they're prominent athletes. They're sports stars. Wrestling, pro wrestling, either if it's AEW, TNA, Ring of Honor, WWE, NXT, or the small little independent cir- circuits going around you know, in Wisconsin, Los Angeles, Thousand Oaks area, um, Texas, Atlanta, whatever. Like, this is a sport. This is something that is, um, I don't know, very, 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 that it's just, it's loved by people. Wrestling has been like, I don't know. I think, ah, man, I, there was this one, like a YouTube, a YouTuber who basically said where they grew up, they didn't really have an NFL team or a major league baseball team uh, or a basketball team. 
usually you kind of have the United States where the West Coast kind of has a lot of attention, obviously. And then you have like the East Coast. And as it kind of draws toward the Midwest area, I know the NBA has Oklahoma City. But besides that, like you kind of have a Wyoming and like Idaho and um, and Nebraska and South Dakota, North Dakota. And none of those really have any sports teams, any sport. I know a lot of minor league baseball teams kind of take a kind of take, you know, home there, so to speak, because, you know, a lot of like um, teams like, for example, like the Anaheim Angels have the Salt Lake City, uh, Utah uh, Bees. And because there's not really a there's not a baseball team in uh, Utah. So that's kind of like where people turn to to get their baseball fix. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, well, well, I was going to kind of segue it off there. But if, if there's no really popular teams in there or like sports uh, enigmas or conglomerates, they rely on wrestling. They rely on independent circuits that they go and they travel to and they watch every weekend that they actually really pay attention to. And I don't know. Sometimes uh, wrestling is a household name, kind of like the Dallas Cowboys or like the Los Angeles Lakers or, you know, even the Los Angeles Dodgers, like all, you know, sports serves a purpose. And that's the reason why the GSMC podcast network is, you know, kind of promoting sports. I love sports. You love sports. Why else are you here? You know, in that Um, but this is all something that we as a community could come together and kind of just have fun, kind of just enjoy it while we have it kind of just, um, I don't know, kind of build this sense of like family, like, I don't know. I know a lot of stuff in the world right now is, uh, you know, kind of, it's like, it's kind of hard to turn on the nightly news, but, uh, sports is always there for us, ladies and gentlemen. So. All right. Well, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you guys liked it. Um we get an um we get a number of questions during the show. So like I said, don't you know always remember that you have that tips and donations box. Um thank you for tuning in to the Wrestling Laureate podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show. Remember to share